Who are you? Hi, I'm Leo. Leo Wittrich. I'm co-founder of Buffer. Yeah. And, uh, and we're at, here at AngelPad seeing a bunch of cool, cool companies. So what does Buffer do? Sure. So um, Buffer, in very short, is it allows you to queue up tweets for them to be posted at a better time. So sometimes people are reading news late at night or in the morning and tweeting out the stuff then always puts it to waste and no one sees it. So by buffering it from anywhere you are, you, it just um, allows you to tweet out the stuff at a better time, well spaced out over the day, so that more people, you get more exposure for your tweets. So we're going to see even more tweets at 9 a.m. <laughs> Pacific time. Yeah. We all know, you know if, if you've done analysis of when the most likely chance it is that there's going to be an audience to listen to you, it's probably 9 a.m. on a Tuesday morning, right? Which is why there's so many tweets. My tweet stream really speeds up right about then. And Guy Kawasaki even takes advantage of this, right? He, he found that he has a team that tweets for him. And um, he found that, that you should repeat your tweet like four times over the next 24 hours because there's a new audience each time that will see it. Can you do that kind of repetition as well? Yeah, absolutely. So um, for, fortunately, like um, Guy, Guy is close to us and he's pushing out a lot, us a lot to introduce that rotation feature. We, have, we don't have it yet, but we are thinking very seriously about it. Because okay. <laughs> so, yeah. that makes a lot of sense. It pisses a lot of people off because they see the same tweet twice. But to tell you the truth, I, on my screen, it just streams down. I, I see a new tweet every half a second. Yeah. And so the chances that I'm going to see your really important tweet are pretty going down and yeah. getting lower and lower and lower. Yeah. Um, now, on Google Plus, it's a different game, right? Because there's engagement there and yeah. things stick around longer because there's fewer people. But it's speeding up, too. I'm seeing a new, a new post over there every 15 seconds or so, oh, which wow. is still pretty uh, slow yeah. compared to Twitter, but, uh, <laughs> but it's speeding up, right? And as that system gets used by more and more people and brands come into it, it'll yeah. speed up even more. Right? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. So, are you, so you're totally about Twitter today. Yeah, so at the moment we have, we have Twitter. Um, we launched a Facebook version, um, very, a soft version very recently. Yeah. Um, you can get onto the beta if you want right now, bufferapp.com slash Facebook. And, uh, the next steps will be LinkedIn and Google Plus, just because it makes a lot of sense to kind of, you know, work in chunks. You know, a lot of people can't be online all the day. They kind of do their reading at one time, you know, they browse their flip or whatever for half an hour, right? And then they just buffer the stuff they find, which is cool. You know, it saves That's them a ton of time. That's interesting because if I'm reading in Flipboard, how do I buffer it? Yeah, so we at, at the moment we have an email function which makes it very easy send via email into your buffer. Um, okay. But we're working with Flipboard and with a lot of apps to get the buffering functionality inside their app Got because it. it helps them a lot to increase the retention with their app, right? So you're not going to get distracted by your Twitter stream and leave. Flipboard or the other app, right? You just yeah. you hit buffer I can continue reading, continue browsing. Here's something that I, I need because of, an, of NDAs. Sure. So like I just saw a Toshiba laptop this morning and it's NDA until Thursday at 9 a.m. In mm -hmm. other words, I can't release any information about it. I can't put photos up, I can't put pictures up, yeah. and I can't tweet about it, I can't put it on Google+. <laughs> okay. But I want that all to happen automatically right at 9 a.m. Yeah. Is there any way to do that? Absolutely. So we have something, a very cool feature, which exactly would help you with that. It's called buffering pattern, right? And so you could have a separate back pattern for your tweets going out, which you put into a separate buffer, right? So you say, this buffer should start tweeting only in a week's time, right? And then you, but you can queue it up right now. Well, the pictures and all the photos, right? And then once you, the day arrives, well spaced out, every now, every day, every two hours, you will, you will drip feed, you know, those great tweets about. about um, now that does it for the tweet. Yeah. But you have to go back and look at the photo because I'm not allowed to put that up on. I'm not allowed to make it public. Okay. So I can upload it to Flickr or yeah, or that's somewhere true. else. That, that's and true. Keep it in a private that's area. That's true. Yeah. So I need this. I need your system. To go and mark that photo from public or from private to public. Yeah. And same thing with my YouTube video. Yeah. I can yeah. upload a YouTube video, but I gotta keep it private until 9 a.m. Pacific time. Got it. But if you buffer it with the link, and it just tur okay. Okay. Yeah. But yeah see, okay. I need I need oh, to go over yeah. to YouTube and turn oh, it public yeah. first. Yeah, that's true. Now, if I could automate all three that's of those cool. things, that's that would cool. be really cool. That, because, that's a great suggestion, actually. Yeah, yeah I, I like that a lot. Because yeah, it could just kind of do be a lot more intelligent for you then. Yeah, and yeah. that that gets beyond just trying to game the social graph. You know, yeah. in other words, put up stuff when people are there. Mm. That actually is useful. 
Um, and I would pay for that, by the way. <laughs> it's really a pain in the ass. Some of these embargoes end right at five in the morning. Or something <laughs> Can't like that. I have like to wake a, up, uh, yeah. you know, because I don't have a good automated system yeah. to do that, right? True. So I have to wake up and mark the video public. And okay. Like Anyways, that's a, getting you off off topic of what you're doing right now. Yeah. How do you guys get paid, and uh, what's your business going? Sure. Be? So we we have a very um, traditional freemium model. So and there's a very decent free plan. So we kind of take the Evernote approach, right? We yeah. we have a very decent free plan, which we we know that 98% of our users will always be free, and we're happy to have them as free users because they help us, you know, spread the word. And if you want to use multiple Twitter accounts or multiple team members, or you need more space in your buffer to store more tweets, then you get the pro or the a premium version, which is either ten dollars a month or thirty dollars a month. Do you do you have any data on how many tweets per hour somebody can do without pissing off their followers? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and do you, and do you warn people like, yeah. hey, you're tweeting too much today, you're gonna piss everybody off? Yeah, um, that's a good point. Yeah, we have data on that. We have just put uh, actually some actual research out, and so we found that in general, buffer users increase clicks on their links by two hundred percent. They double their retweets and they gain a hundred followers within three weeks and the uh, cloud score rises as well, depending on how important that is to you. Yeah. But um, speak, um, coming back to the question, the data we found is that on average you shouldn't tweet more than one to four times an hour. Right? Yeah. As soon as you hit more than four times a, an hour, your click-through rate nearly drops to exactly zero, right? no matter what, who you are. So one tweet per, per hour gives you the highest click-through rate, um, but two, two tweets by, by per hour might be even better because you don't have the click-through rate of one tweet, yeah. but you know, combining them, if you have 10 clicks on the one tweet per hour, but six, if you post two, you still have 12, right? Yeah. So um, I think one to two tweets would be very optimal, one to two tweets per hour. Yeah. 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 There is a limit, by the way, and you'll hit this limit if you're covering a news story and you, you're just flooding tweets with um, info about this news story, it, I think it's like 200 a day or 250 yeah. per day. Right? Yeah. Do you warn people that you're hitting that limit as well? Yeah, so we, we just introduced a few of these things because these were problems we hadn't anticipated before. And yeah. we had like people who would set up, you can also manually set up daily tweeting times in your buffer. And people would have set up like 100 daily tweeting times, right? And they would literally, every few minutes, they would, you know, throw stuff to Twitter. And then, then Twitter told them you can't you can't tweet that often, right? So they would stall their buffer, right? But now we've put these systems into place, telling people, "Hang on, stop, please post less. Your API limit is you know, over the API limit for Twitter." So yeah, that's a, that's a really good point. Yeah, interesting. Really but all these that. weird things you have to learn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I just know I uh, I think Andy Carbon or somebody like that uh, who works at NPR hit that limit because he was covering, I think, the Egypt. Right. So if there's an earthquake, for instance, and you're retweeting too many times yeah. about an earthquake, we hit that in the Japanese earthquake, right? Oh, okay. If, yeah. you, if you are retweeting too much information too mm. quickly, uh, Twitter turns you off yeah. and says, hey, you're tweeting too much. That's true. Yeah. So you have to sort of remember uh, 200 per uh, yeah. day or you, something yeah. like that. Yeah. And uh, you have to be, be a little bit cautious about hitting the limits. Yeah. Um, 200 cool. is quite accurate, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, anything else we need to know about? Uh, actually, can you show me just the UI? And yeah, sure. I, I can show you the product. Um, so, for us, it's really important that simplicity and you know optimal timing and sharing also comes with making it easy for you to share wherever you are. Yeah. Right. So we have this is a buffer, you know, dashboard, and you can put in tweets in here. We have like suggest me tweet feature. Um, just to get you started, there's quotes in there, and then you, these are the tweets for today, which will go out for my buffer, right? And um, mm -hmm. you know, I can edit them here. I can rearrange them. So you so set now. those times on the left. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so the, the times can be set in your settings. Does it tell? Does it tell you sort of when you should tweet? You know, does it tell you the on your history the best times to tweet are 9:04 p.m. a.m. Yeah. And, and 1.02 p.m., does it tell you that? Yeah, so at the moment we have a general algorithm. So when you first sign up, you have default time set for you, which are based on Twitter peak times when your tweets are most, most likely going to be read, just like you say. Yeah. But um, we want to personalize that a lot more in the future. So it's saying that, you know, Robert Scoble's Twitter account, he has this type of following, therefore he should tweet at these times based on our findings when they will be online. That's what we're working on now. The other thing is this is a world uh, a worldwide thing, right? So while we're awake here in America, China's sleeping, right? Yeah. And so, uh, or somebody's sleeping. I'm not yeah. sure if it's quite China, but somebody <laughs> is sleeping, right? And so, uh, 
you know, if you want to actually reach the Chinese market, right now might not be the best time to tweet, right? It might be better to tweet late at night yeah. or something like that. Does it show you that? Like globally, if you want to meet, reach Americans, tweet now. If mm -hmm. you want to reach Chinese people, tweet now. If you want to reach Indian, you know, the India market, tweet now, that kind of thing. Yeah, so actually at the moment, we just give you the full... Um, opportunity to add these times yourself you know you kind of these are the daily tweeting times. you just have to think about it and then say okay I'm, if absolutely. I'm gonna write a tweet for the Chinese market yeah tweet absolutely this time. yeah so yeah. you can add more times in here you should put a little world clock on it. Like, what time <laughs> absolutely that's a brilliant idea just a, that, that's amazing yeah just just a clock on here and you will know oh yeah I have a lot of followers from there but you can actually do a Google lookup, by the way. It's a little trick with Google. Is okay. if you ask Google what time is it in Moscow, uh, it'll tell you. <laughs> oh, maybe, yeah, maybe you can hook up with that. But that's that's brilliant. Yeah, um, yeah. So we can either do that, so yeah. give the user more control, or just call it. We analyze it for you, and you want you tell us what you we want to, should take into account, right? Yeah. So this is what we are working on now, building a smart algorithm. But we, we've seen the basic one we have in place already. You know, increases clicks tremendously. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. So yeah, no, that's true. and most of the market is still American. You know, a good chunk of it's fifty percent. I, I don't know what the latest stats on Twitter are, but a good chunk of the American is a market is America, and that's usually who I want to reach. Yeah, American absolutely. Speakers, English speakers, and you know that'll hit you know the tail end of uh, England and yeah. Europe and the early yeah. window of, of Japan and China. So. Uh, you know, it kind of makes makes sense. Yeah, yeah and then we're all up late, and they're all up late, so <laughs> we're all messed up. But you can certainly see the traffic, uh, the, the stream goes way slower, let's say at 3 in the morning uh, uh, California time, yeah. than it does at 9 a.m. California time. It really speeds up. That, yeah, that, that's, what, that's what we found as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Cool, where do I learn more? Oh, you um, can just, uh, just Yeah, just a few uh, things uh, which I think could be very interesting is we have like here, we have like a buffer button. For, uh, for your browser, and so you're reading anything, right? And you just, you know, you can hit the buff. Uh, oh, you're on my blog, okay. So for example, I'm, you know, so I'm reading the latest blog. Uh, sorry, the internet might be wrong. Yeah, that's all right. Slowly. So you have a bookmarklet that... Uh, so we have the browser read. extensions and we have the bookmarklet. And okay. um, I just wanted to show that we have like a twitter.com integration as well. Okay. So why the browser extension? Oh, there's a buffer. Yeah, so I find that cool, right? So I just go here and it brings up the buffer box and does an old school retweet Sorry. of Scoble's tweet, right? And okay. I can tweet that now or add it to my buffer. Now, can you, can you schedule a new style retweet or just old style retweet? At the moment, it's, oh, right, you don't like old sky. You hate old sky. Oh, I yeah. <laughs> should have not, not demoed that, that feature, but. <laughs> yeah, no, that's no, cool. But uh, yes, you're right. We, we're working on doing the old, old style at the moment. Yeah, yeah, you definitely want, it, it's absolutely like you say, you need to know the, the new style as well. Very cool. And uh, yeah, so we also show you, in the, we have an analytics dashboard inside your buffer telling you all the, you know, how many clicks you've gotten on your tweets, um, how many people um, have liked something. Let me just show you this here. Yeah. You know, it automatically, like a tweet button, right? And um, takes the, URL, the title of the page and the shortened URL, and you can just edit your buffer. Got right? it. And, um, well, that's cool. So you can go around, surf, surf, and find a bunch of things you exactly. want to share with your audience. Absolutely. Put them in the buffer, and then spread them out over the day, and they'll, they'll tweet every twenty minutes or something like exactly. that. Exactly. So you spend like half an hour in the morning, or even ten minutes. You know, just find the cool stuff, even on Twitter.com, and retweet buffer or or on sites, and then we show you all the analytics: how many retweets you've gotten, how many clicks you've gotten, how much reach, and who's retweeted you. You know, all in the dashboard. Very cool. Yeah. Right. Well, thank you so much. Where do I learn more about it? Yeah, it's a, just go to bufferapp.com. Bufferapp.com. Yep. Um, yeah. And you're yeah. on Twitter as well? Yeah, I'm on Twitter. Um, it's either at bufferapp or at leovid. That's my personal Twitter account. And uh, if you have any questions, you can always email me leo at bufferapp.com. Uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Very cool. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Robert. Okay. <laughs>